Welcome to Influencers, where we bring you the people that influence our community, our city, and our state. Today, we're honored to have brand new Congresswoman <laughs> Susie Lee. Thank How you. Are you Susie? Thanks for having me, Peter. Thanks I'm for happy being to here. Be here. Oh, thanks for being here. I know you're out there working hard. Tell us about yourself. How did you make it to Nevada? Oh my gosh. Well, I've been here for 25 years. I uh, grew up in Canton, Ohio. I'm one of eight children, seven girls, one shower. So wow. I take the world's fastest shower. There you go. But uh, put myself through college at Carnegie Mellon University, went to work for an environmental consulting firm in Boston, met my husband Dan on a blind date, mm -hmm. and uh, he moved out here for a job, and I followed him. And so I've been here and uh, have had a long career in this community. Excellent. Who's had the greatest influence on you, both personally and career-wise? You know, um, throughout my uh, career and growing up, it's really been a combination of people who have really helped me out at key points in my life. I mean, whether it was our swim coach who uh, let my mom teach classes to earn, you know, the uh, fees that it took for me to be on the swim team or um, a high school teacher who helped me out. Um, but most importantly, when I was in college, my father had uh, lost his job. Mm. At the age of 57, I was a sophomore, and um, I was an aerobics instructor, and one of my students ended up giving me a summer job and really helped me get through school. And I had asked um, one time, why are you doing this? And uh, he basically said, because I know you're going to be successful one day, and you're going to wow. turn around and help other people. And uh, I certainly keep that in the back of my mind um, at all times. That's a great story. You know, I, I, similar to, to my story uh, where I had somebody tell me that and you, you often, I often look back and say, wow, what did he see at that moment, right? Mm -hmm. But glad we did. The mentorship and, and people influencing our life is important. Yep. So Congresswoman, how does that sound? <laughs> Congresswoman. I'm still getting used to it. <laughs> How did that journey begin? What made you even think politics and want to go down this road? You know, my whole career here in Southern Nevada has really been all nonprofit work, mostly focused on education. Uh, started out running the inner city games, started the uh, inner city games, worked for Jan Jones, who mm -hmm. was the mayor. We started the MASH Homeless Center. Uh, and then for the past six years, I've been running communities and schools. Uh, which is a dropout prevention program. So I've really focused my career on helping young people have access to opportunities, helping them, you know, get to the starting plate, so to speak. And yeah. um, when you look around and you see the income inequality in this country, you see students coming out of college with debilitating student debt. Uh, the cost of living keeps going up, but people's wages aren't. You really have to start looking to Washington. Yeah. and. Um, I think a lot of people have been frustrated over the past, uh, you know, 10 years, particularly with the dysfunction and the, the hyper-partisanship in Washington. And so uh, you talked about who influenced me in my life. Well, my mom would always say, if you want something done right, you better do it yourself. That's right. right? You and took so, that literally. Yeah. So um, I got in the race and uh, really it's, uh, to me, it's about trying to work together trying to solve problems and help people have better lives. Yeah. I mean, and I think a lot of people who run for office, I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat, run for that same reason. Yeah. And I think uh, we need to be a little more committed at finding the common ground that we can work together on and trying to really put our heads together and get to solutions instead of scoring political points. Get things done on behalf of people that yep. believed in you. Yep. More with our Congresswoman Susie Lee in a moment. Welcome back to Influencers. Today we have our Congresswoman from CD3, Susie Lee. Susie, Thanks. tell us how things get done in DC. <laughs> a lot of people don't understand how it works down there. You're in the trenches now. I'll tell you what, it's, um, you know, uh, there's, I, I got elected, I'm one of uh, 63 Democratic members, 40 of us come from districts like Congressional District 3, where they, you know, where people are really craving working together, some bipartisanship, and um, 
certainly you have to make a hard effort to reach across the aisle. And everything in life's about building relationships. It really is. It's about, you know, finding, talking to people, finding out what their passions are, what they're concerned with, and really trying to find common ground. And, yeah. you know, and it, Congress right now is a divided Congress. Democrats are in the House, so the Senate's controlled by Republicans. And so I think it's really even more important that we find those pieces of legislation that we can actually start to build together because, you know, I'm more interested in passing legislation yeah. that's going to be signed into law than making a point. And so, and I want to commend you because that's a consistent theme we've met throughout the campaign, and you are continuing to say that. And I'm telling you, people are listening to that. That's important. For example, today, 300,000 over 300,000 new jobs created in January. I don't care if that who's in the White House or who. Right. 300,000 jobs, that's good for all of us. Uh -huh. I wish we were at a place where we could all just celebrate that, but you see hesitancy, right, because of politics. Mm -hmm. So what are your priorities for CD3? Listen, I, um, as you know, my whole career has been in education, and I'm so happy that I've been appointed to the Education and Labor Committee. I'm on the subcommittee for higher ed and workforce development. Uh, definitely, those are issues that are incredibly important to economic development here in our We're community. We're talking about it every day. Every day. And um, I'm actually also on the Civil Rights and Human Services mm -hmm. Subcommittee, which really focuses a lot on the issues that I've worked on for 25 years, making sure that kids come to school, have access to the services that yeah. they need so they can be successful. And then I've uh, been appointed to the Veterans Affairs Committee. I saw that. I know. That's again, good. again, my subcommittee is economic opportunity, really looking at what are the opportunities we have to get veterans not only the services they need, but get them into our workforce, uh, which is really important. And, and I believe that's the answer. Yep, I know. So. Yeah. Um, I was excited about you getting those appointments. Those are right up your alley. So CD3 is in good hands. That's right. I mean, listen, I, you know, I'm elected and I want to go into Congress and be, in a be there and really focus on when I'm voting for a bill, does it improve the lives of the people who live in my district? Does it move our country forward? And does it align with my values? And that's really what I will be focusing on back in Washington. More with a focused Congresswoman Susie Lee in a moment. Hi, welcome back. Congresswoman, tell us how you feel about small business. I, I know you know about business, both you and your husband, and, and you guys have been successful, and that's something to celebrate. Um, how do you feel about small business? Listen, I mean, when you drive up and down the streets here in our community and look at what's operating in our strip malls, and that's the lifeblood of our community. Right. It really is. And, uh, you know, before I came here, I met with the Henderson Chamber of Commerce, over 80% of their uh, members are, uh, sh you know, mom and pop shops sure. with less than 20 employees. I mean, small businesses are really make our communities run. Mm -hmm. So it's about really, about 76% you know, here. Yeah. So you know, and what you all did with the healthcare uh, exchange with coming um, together, the association with yep. uh, Henderson and the Asian Chamber and the Urban Chamber. I mean, that's really an in innovative solution for a problem that is facing so many small businesses. So I hope to be a partner with you and try to come up with solutions on, you know, whether it's uh, regulations that are really making it hard for businesses to get off the ground, um, opening up access to capital, which so many small businesses mm -hmm. have issues with, and really doing some trainings and making sure that they can get off started on the right foot is uh, going to be important for me. Now, I know education certainly is, uh, has been a passion of yours. What can you do in Congress that will help education here in Nevada, or well, at least in your district? I know. Well, you know, I was um, already co-sponsored the Invest in uh, Educate Saw Classrooms that. Act. So really, you know, when we talk about infrastructure, we need to talk about infrastructure in our education buildings. That's right. And um, I'm going to be really particularly focused on higher ed. I'm bringing research dollars to Nevada. Um, on you know bringing workforce development dollars here to Nevada as well, um, but and 
particular issue that affects so many young people in our state around this country is student debt. And really looking at, uh, you know, we've had some for-profit universities that have shut down and have let a lot of kids, you know, who took out yep. loans and now they have nothing to show for it. So not right. we got to take on the student debt crisis in this country because, um, you know, kids got to be able to come out of school and not be debilitated and more importantly, come out with the skill that will transfer into a good paying job. Yeah. So tell us something that everybody wants to know. How was your <laughs> first encounter with Nancy Pelosi? <laughs> Hey, listen, you know, I came in as the largest class of women in Congress ever. So it was pretty incredible to elect uh, Nancy Pelosi, who is our first woman speaker now uh, for her second yeah. term uh, with a little interruption in, in between. But, uh, you know, she's a she's a great leader and, um, you know, it's been uh, an honor to work with her. Excellent. We'll be back with our last segment with Congresswoman Susie Lee in a moment. We are back with our Congresswoman for our last segment, but we'll have her back again. Oh yeah. Let me ask you something. How do you feel your relationship is with the Latino community? You know, I've worked with the Latino community, uh, particularly around education for a long time. I um, was a part of the English Language Learner Advisory Board. You and I worked together. We met on several committees. Right. So, um, you know, when you look at the growing sectors of our community and who's important to, you know, growing this community, you have to look at our Latino community. And um, I've had a great relationship really focused on making sure that we're opening up access to education, uh, cl closing some significant achievement gaps as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, from my point of view, I have a lot of friends in the Latino community, but more importantly, great relationships like you and I, yep, and I uh, look forward to working with you. And, and do you feel like uh, the Latin Chamber has been by your side and will be very supportive? Absolutely. I mean, Thank you. Yeah. yeah. No. And uh, and the again, reason why is because the small business community, they got children in education. They oh got yeah. children in these schools. So I tell people, it works hand in hand. That's right. You know, you and I, we've had many chances to talk. I've come here and talked to yep. your membership uh, yep. several times. And again, I think we're all really focused on how are we able to build an economy that works for everyone and make sure we educate our young people so that they have opportunities that we had. And, uh, and when you look at it and you look at our small businesses and people who are going out on a limb, taking out loans, being entrepreneurs, yep. I mean, they are the ones who are taking on the big risks in our community. And so I hope they know that they have someone who's rooting for them and uh, will be a resource to help. How can the Hispanic community take more advantage of your office? Uh, well, you know, I have several uh, employees, uh, several who are here today. That's right. Uh, so it's an open line. I mean, please make a phone call if you have any questions. I hope everyone reaches out to my uh, office and we'll be here to help. And how do you feel about DACA and immigration? Uh, you know, I think that immigration has been a sad chapter in our country's history and the way that it's been dealt with in such a piecemeal manner right. and we have not you know 2013 we had a comprehensive immigration reform package which by the way we were talking about a lot more money than 5.7 right. billion for uh, border security and so um, now we're getting back into where we're trading you know one thing for another when really we need comprehensive immigration reform that being said we have to find a solution for dreamers and for TPS uh, you know, and to offer them a permanent solution. And holding, a, to, to me, most importantly, the thing that upsets me on what's going on now is understanding that it's people's lives right. and it's families and it's children who are wondering what they're gonna do with their future. And so um, I'm hopeful that we can get to a comprehensive immigration yeah. reform package 
And, and um, I'll tell you, it's, it's easy to, to dismiss when you're very busy and you're caught up in your own world. But when, when you have a kid come up to you who tells you that he's been here since he was four years old, he's now 21, went to college, doing everything the right way, and he looks you in the eye and says, you know, I, I, don't, I can't go anywhere else. This is the country I want to be at and the only country I know. Right. It really hits home. Yeah. And by the way, that story is a true story. That kid works here for me. Oh, yeah. I mean, or people who served in our military. Or, I mean, and so, you know, I've had many uh, round tables with dreamers. I've worked with uh, dreamer, dreamers in communities and schools. And really, it's about security yeah. and knowing that you can plan for your future. I mean, I went to UNLV last fall, met with, th I mean, there were, must have been 25 yeah. kids. Many of them have, are about to get their master's degree or and they want to go in. And they're going to become productive yeah, tax-paying citizens. Be, yeah, so, you yeah. know, I think we need to, we definitely need to have a solution to that. So I know it's early on, you just won, but what's the future? What's the future for Congresswoman Susie Lee? It, you know, I'm really going to be focused, especially this session, on Congressional District 3 and what it is that I can do in Washington to move uh, the agenda forward for Southern Nevada, and whether it's education or veterans issues, and most importantly, economic development. Um, that's what I, I really focus, I wanna focus on. You know, it's pretty easy when you get back to Washington to get caught up in Washington, D.C. And so I think it takes a big discipline to really be, again, focused on does this affect people who live in Congressional District 3 does this move us forward? And that's really what I'm going to be focused on. Excellent. We do this to bring the influencers closer to you. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Influencers with our Congresswoman, Susie Lee. Until the next time, stay motivated and stay inspired. That was excellent.